and welcome Robbie Gordon to Trackside. Let me see that hat. What's the significance of the hats here, Robbie? Well, we got uh, we got some good stuff going on. We got Montgomery Gentry here, and you got cowboy hats, so you don't need. I don't need cowboy hats. But, that's, a, um, that's a good call on his. Montgomery part. Gentry here this weekend with us. Oh, okay. Uh, Jim Beam, my sponsor, has a concert going on tomorrow night. Should be a good time. See, unlike Hammond, I got a hat and cattle. See, he doesn't have this hat fits a little hat. better than the hat Hammond gave me at Texas last year. Yeah, I like this hat. When you look like Juan Valdez. How you doing, young man? I think we're okay. I mean, you know, I, I almost have to rethink that. I just realized you are 40 years old. Isn't that a great thing? But no, I, well, here's why I say that. I still think you as being a kid. The way you play, the, the way, way, the way you, I act, maybe? I mean, <laughs> the way you just you race anything, everything, anywhere, anytime. I mean, how do you keep that up? Good people, I guess. Um, just working hard and you know making sure all the programs are, are lined out. But um, we got a lot of races coming up um, this month and beginning of next month um, between Eldora stuff and Baja and and obviously the All Star race here and the 600 next weekend. So um, and and we've already been we're going to be in this deal next year before we have to be voted in. I'm I'm telling you, I'm, I'm made up your mind. We're done. We're over with it. We started testing our road course program one week ago. And um, we've never been six weeks out on a road course program, so uh, built new race cars, two brand new ones, and uh, they're hot rods. So we were very good down at Road Atlanta, and um, look forward to, uh, to seeing how we stack up going the next, uh, say the next month, we're going every single week testing, and we'll see where we end up. Put all your eggs in that basket. That's well, what I, mean, I do. You know, most of these races, you come here and you say, okay, um, when you go to, let, let's just say, any NASCAR race, you know, obviously... Take Kyle Busch out of the equation, out of the equation or, uh, but, or, or Mark Martin these days. And I said, that's a good thing that I'm 40 because my that's career right. just got extended. That's right. <laughs> At the end of the day, the career just got extended with Mark. And he's, he's having a great year and having good runs. But, um, you know, there's, there's 20 guys that can win races on any given weekend. When you go to the road course, there's seven of us probably. The Maybe five. Definitely smaller. And, yeah. um, you know, if we, if we can be prepared and focused and, and have a 20% have a shot at winning that race, and make sure we dot all our I's and cross our T's. Now, we're going to go for it. So um, look forward to Sonoma coming up. And I'm, I'm ready for the All-Star race. I think our car is pretty good. We are 12th in practice. Um, we only made one qualifying run, and we were too tight, which was nice that we got to make one before we had to qualify tonight because I think that's going to be important. Daryl, you kind of look like Howdy Doody. He's struggling. There you I'm telling you. <laughs> I, just, I just never, I never, I never had a head for a hat, you know? Okay. Robbie, a Darryl full face helmet, maybe, but not a hat. <laughs> Daryl mentioned one thing that, that impresses me, and it's the fact that you, you never put <laughs> back. But the other thing that impresses me about you, it, it, being a single car owner, and when you look at so many cars out here week in and week out with blank quarter panels, you seem like you do a good job of keeping sponsorship on that car. I mean, you get it from Jim Beam, Menards, Monster Energy Drink. You had Quaker State at Darlington. You do a good job of keeping companies involved with your race team. Yeah, we have, we have obviously my pay. We've, we've got a, a tremendous group of sponsors that, um, that fill the sponsorship on the seven car. And, you know... Um, how you say it? We just, we just keep digging, and we, we work hard every week in and week out, not only on the race cars, but on the sponsorship. And I think we got some really good stuff coming with our race cars, and I look forward to the second half of the season. Robbie, Steve brought that out. You know, you've driven everything. I think you've raced everything. and ha only thing I haven't heard you mention in is a Formula One car. Why NASCAR? I mean, why did you decide to stay Because, I mean, you can go off-road racing, and you can, you can win every time you show up. You can go to, back to Indy, and you're very competitive up there. But you take on, I mean, what I consider the toughest circuit, the longest season there is, and you've kind of decided to put your ownership and all your kind of like, you know, all your effort here. Why? Well, um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And, and I think um, when you come to this level, you're racing the best teams in America, and that's what we thrive to do. Um, you know, with our off-road program, we, we feel we're one of the best teams. We won the first race this year. We finished second in the second one. We finished third in the Dakar Rally up against Volkswagen, Mitsubishi, BMW, Mercedes, uh, teams like that with our Hummer program. And, um, you know, I think that um, this is the, if you're going to strut your stuff, the Cup Series is where it's at. Um, you know, we, we went bush racing, and, you know, I, I, with our own team, we won in race 10. It was, it was how I say it was easy. Um, maybe a lot like the off-road. When you step up to the cup level, this is the big leagues. When you race against teams like Hendrick and Roush, Childress, who obviously I was fortunate enough to, to learn some experience, gain a lot of experience, spent three and a half years there. 
and uh, I learned a lot from Richard. I've driven for Jack before in the Trans Am cars, and these are the, these are the players that, that build the best race teams in America, and that's something we thrive to do. Robbie, I was doing some research, and I didn't realize that uh, your dad was quite a legend in his own right. They called him Baja Bob. I, I want you to tell us a little bit what it's like. I know you've won the Baja 1000 at least three times. How does that race even happen? Talk about the logistics and, and just what goes into it. Well, it's, that, that, that race there is so different than anything we do here. It's um, night and day. Um, because here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, every mile and a half, I can come in and see my pit crew. There, you may go 200 miles without seeing a person. Wow. <laughs> and um, at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so your preparation on your race cars have to be, sorry to say this, far superior to what we do here. Um, the reason why is the suspension, the bumps, the rattles, the shakes, the vibrations that you get. Um, if you don't use Loctite and you don't torque every nut and bolt, stuff just falls off the car. And, 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 and tell me about what happened uh, in the race where you got lost. Or at least they said you got lost. Or got, you got off course. Or what did you do anyway? What was that about? Well... I mean, is that a bad... Should I not ask you that? No, you can ask me. I, but I, I was just I think curious. At, at the end of the day, they opened up the rules here a little bit, and they said you can, as long as you make the checkpoints, that's what they said at the driver's meeting. So at the end of the day, that's what I did. You made I made the, the checkpoints. Um, did I get on the highway? No. Okay, would I like to get on the highway? Yes, especially for the first 30 miles, because it's nothing but three-foot-tall bumps for 30 miles straight. The shock temperatures go to about 650 degrees through those bumps. And, um, it's, you know, you'd love to get on the highway there. But er other places, uh, we, we basically ra race the course. We cut corners. I mean, that's, everybody does it. When they open up the rules like that, come back for the bottom 500, obviously, they've tightened up their rules. And, and no different than NASCAR. They say, okay, we're going to let you have some gray areas here. You push the gray area all the way to the edge. So you didn't, you didn't break a rule. You just made a new one. We just, we just kind of refined the rule book refined a, a little, little bit. bit. Okay. What's that, McReynolds? I'm talking to the producer. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me, I think, that the Grand Marshal at Sonoma is going to be Kenny Stabler, the snake. The snake oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Y'all all looked at me. <laughs> you got caught this time on the, on the talk back right there, huh? Way to pay attention there, Robbie. <laughs> I was like, hey, they quit talking. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, the Baja thing, I didn't do anything more different than, than Hammond and McReynolds do in NASCAR, you know, push, no. push the rules. Pays more to win, right? Yes, and I was talking to Daryl, speaking of paying. Yeah, and, look. And I'm, I'm pretty bummed that I'm not in the burnout contest. I, I've got it down. If you do a backwards S and a burnout straight through it, you can do the dollar sign. So, um, he wants me to do there's it. There's your challenge. There do it, it is. The dollar do sign. Do the dollar sign. I told him I only got 30 seconds. You can do it. Well, how long does it take you to do it? You can do I it. I have no idea. I mean, you ever seen how fast they go down drag strip? That's only four and a half seconds. Come Might on. take me 30 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Time works.